We talk about the possibility of being in an overly anabolic state in pretty much all of our books and courses, so we get a lot of you guys asking us questions about this anabolic state. So this video, we're going to break down how this can happen, what problems can come from this overly anabolic state, and how you can fix it. Here we go. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Dr. Emanuel Rivisi helped us understand that at the cellular level, our body has a natural circadian rhythm. So during the day, our cells are in a more catabolic state. This is where our body is really good at creating energy and breaking down debris so we can get rid of all this junk and lose all the metabolic waste that the body needs to get rid of. So this is an appropriate state for us to be during the day. And at night, our cells will move into a more anabolic state. And this is where our body is really good at engaging in restful sleep and while it handles all of its repairing and rebuilding processes. So you can see that both of these states are appropriate. They're both beneficial. We really want both to happen. Where the trouble comes in is when somebody gets stuck in one of these states most of the time and they're not moving back and forth from day to night like they should be. Now for a lot of folks, the only time they've heard the word anabolic is in reference to anabolic steroids where a weightlifter or bodybuilder may use these steroids to help their body build more muscle mass. And the reason that this can be effective in that regard is that it pushes that body far into the rebuild and repair state all of the time. So the body's constantly rebuilding. The problem is using these steroids can create a whole lot of problems. What a person could do if they wanted to build more muscle was use some natural food options and supplement options to help push their body towards this anabolic state so it can rebuild a little more muscle without cramming it into the state and creating a lot of problems. Now, if a person is stuck in this anabolic state most of the time, they may have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning because at the cellular level, their body is still asleep. It's also very common to see constipation and anxiety in an overly anabolic state. But it's important to understand that these are not the only causes for these symptoms. So you don't want to say to yourself, oh, I have constipation, so I must be overly anabolic, or, or I'm anxious, so I, I must have this anabolic imbalance. These are just possible issues that we see in this imbalance, and these seem to be the most common. In an overly anabolic state, the body will send more of our water through the kidneys and less to the bowels. So the person's stool can get a little bit hard and dry and make it harder to move. They may also find themselves getting up to pee a lot in the middle of the night because the body's sending all of its water through the kidneys. In an overly anabolic state, the body also likes to create energy through fermentation. And a byproduct of creating energy through fermentation can be lactic acid. So if the body's stuck in this anabolic state and creating a lot of its energy through fermentation, it can accumulate too much lactic acid, which can cause anxiety and even panic attacks. Now, remember, there's other causes for anxiety and panic attacks. What's nice is that if we can look at our unique bioindividuality and run simple self-tests that we can do at home using tools we can pick up at a pharmacy or a health food store, and we see that, yeah, it appears that we're looking too far on that anabolic side and we're dealing with symptoms that commonly show up in an anabolic state, well, then we can take steps to improve that imbalance and see if those symptoms will improve as well. A person may also see that they're having a hard time losing weight because at the cellular level, the body's not breaking down. They're not getting rid of a lot of that metabolic waste and the body's not getting rid of that junk. It's kind of holding on to all of that. So in some cases, improving an anabolic imbalance can get through that rough spot of inability to lose some weight. One of the possible markers for an overly anabolic state is a high urine pH. So if you test your urine pH and it's over 6.2, that can be a possible indication that you may be leaning too far on that anabolic side. And consuming too many carbs and sugars tends to push that urine pH higher. This is also where we see a lot of hypoglycemic type symptoms that people might be dealing with, like dizzy spells or just sugar crashes or emotional issues when they have those sugar crashes and, and problems like that. So if you are leaning too far on this anabolic side and you're consuming a lot of carbs and sugars, the first step would be to reduce your carb and sugar intake and allow your urine pH to come down a little bit. Now, a second important factor when it comes to improving an anabolic imbalance is making sure that any digestive malfunctions are corrected. Because a lot of people have gravitated towards consuming more carbs and sugars because they can't break down proteins and fats correctly. 
We have a lot of videos on different forms of digestive symptoms and issues and ways to correct those problems, so if you're dealing with any digestive symptoms at all, check out our videos page to see which symptoms you may be dealing with to see if we've covered that topic. But if a person can improve their ability to properly process proteins and fats correctly, then they reduce their needs for carbohydrates and sugars. There are also food choices that can help you improve an anabolic imbalance. For most people, it appears that hard-cooked eggs can help push a person less anabolic. Hard-cooked eggs would be like a hard-boiled egg or scrambled eggs or omelet-styled eggs where that yolk is cooked to a solid state. Another great food option is extra virgin olive oil in an unheated state. We really don't like to see people cook with olive oil because it can kind of make those fats into a, a toxic situation when you make them too hot. You can cook your food and then add olive oil to it afterwards, but unheated olive oil can have a lot of benefits for someone who's leaning too far on that anabolic side. Some people have a lot of success using supplements as well. Magnesium is a very pro-catabolic mineral, so it pushes a person out of that anabolic state. Vitamin B12 can also be very effective in this regard. But the first step is to figure out if you really are leaning too far on this anabolic side. You really want to look at your body chemistry to understand this. You don't want to just go off of symptoms. So I'm going to give you two totally free options, and we'll put these in the description below this video. You can get my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, and that walks you through how to do these simple self-tests that you can do at home just using tools you can pick up at a pharmacy or a health food store. And that'll help you figure out, looking at the results of those tests, to figure out, am I leaning too far on the anabolic side? And if so, what foods or supplement options will help me correct that imbalance? We talk about a lot more food and supplement options in that book, but you really want to know what your body chemistry is before you start using those because some of those supplements will depend on where your body chemistry is. If you think that reading is a bore, we have a totally free online digestion course that walks you through these same steps. So we'll put both of those links in the description below and you can dig into your body chemistry and see what's going on with you. It's really not about finding a remedy or a, a popular supplement. It's really about working with your unique bioindividuality so you can improve imbalances that are creating the issues for you. For now, if you are dealing with constipation issues, check out our video on understanding constipation to look at other aspects that can contribute to constipation as well. I can't wait to hear about your results.